Okay, welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to everyone watching us today. Thank you very much for, for joining us uh, this afternoon, day one of Copsis Con. Uh, if you've been watching the, the live events so far, I've had three different webinars that we've had. Obviously, the introduction, the inspection so far that we've had for the M300, which is absolutely awesome. Um, and then we've had the, the surveying side of things as well. So this is my first step of drone, oh, Copters Con. And this is how Chris built his drone business in 12 weeks. So we've got Chris on with us today. And we're going to be diving into how and why his business was so successful, how we did it in the timeline, and what information and, and what little bits and golden nuggets we can give you, the guys that are watching this today. So, yeah, thank you again for joining us. And we'll dive straight in. But yeah, thanks for joining us on Copterscom. Let's see how it goes. So yeah, I'm Jamie Corden. I'm a UAV strategist here at Copters. Been working here for about two years now, just over two years. And I specialize in helping people get into the industry, give them the training, the drones, the support that they need to get into this really exciting and raw industry of drones. So generally, um, if we're helping people or businesses rather, we work with three main pillars. So saving time, saving money, and making processes safer. And that is how we use drones in this industry. Arguably slightly different for media, uh, but that is where we're gonna be looking. Um, so yeah, my job is to help people get into the industry and uh, be as successful as possible. What we're gonna be covering here today, guys, is, uh, well, an introduction to, to Chris himself, a special guest, um, to TLP, to his business, what he's done, what his past is, uh, and what present and future holds for for TLP, um, an insight to our market, constantly being asked, where are drones, where is the market, is it saturated in some cases, uh, where do I need to be aiming, so we'll start there, we'll be touching on my top tips, um, we'll have a Q&A for, for Chris, we'll actually have two Q&As for, for Chris today, um, we'll go into hardware, what, what options there are out there, what sort of sectors there are in the industry um, and what hardware works best off the back of those. We know that drones are very, very versatile, but which fit best in those different areas off the back of entry, intermediate and um, specialist level drones. And then again, we'll have another Q&A for Chris at the end. Um, and this will be what his next steps are uh, on what the future holds for TLP. So yeah, let's crack on. Let's meet our special guest. So this is Chris Flanagan, everyone, um, from TLP Security. Um, so yeah, Chris, do you want to give yourself a bit of an introduction, mate? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Chris. Um, I set up uh, TLP Limited Drone Security Specialist uh, two years ago now. Uh, literally, uh, it's two years to the, the month uh, when I went to my first event uh, with Copters. Um, at uh, the Clayton Hotel in Leeds, and uh, ironically enough, that that event was titled "Building a, a Successful Drone Industry." Um, and two years on, um, I'm now here to talk to you guys. It's great to listen to me. That's it. We're doing it. We're doing it. But yeah, it, it feels like it does feel like a while ago now. Um, but yeah, let's let's uh, let's dive in it and see what what your process is were then, Chris. How you got to this stage. And so just, well, we can all see the questions up on the board and we'll, we'll just fire through these, but how did you come across Copters and, and how did you, well, we, we, I know we met at, um, in Leeds at the Marriott it was, um, but yeah, how did, how did you come across Copters then, then Chris? Yeah, so uh, prior to coming into the drone industry, I was with uh, Thames Valley Police um, and yeah, was was really looking for uh, the, the next solution um, and the next sort of challenge uh, for, for where my career was going. Um, and yeah, really just started looking around. I could see the application that the drones could have uh, within the security sector. Uh, I had a good colleague of mine who recommended Copters as, as an agency to go to, um, did a bit more digging. Um, and, and that's one thing you'll find with the industry, the more research you can do, the better. Um, but yeah, Copters kept coming out on top. So yeah, that's who I went with. Spawn. Yeah, that's awesome. And do you know what, just off the back of that, more and more I find that with our, with our clients and customers, uh, 
And you're absolutely right that you need to be doing more and more research because there are so many questions, there are so much detail, even abbreviations, so many caps in this industry. So the more research you do, the better it's going to be. And it's the reason we have days like this, this these events like Copters Con. So you can have a more educated decision so you can make the right choices moving forward. But time and time again, I get told every step I get to, it always leads back to copters. If it's a good feedback, if it's a bit of research, if it's a webinar, it always comes back to us, which is amazing to hear. Um, and I think as the, the industry is growing, I, I'd like to argue that copters is doing exactly the same. But yeah, it's, it's great that we, uh, we met over a referral, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, Chris, you, you mentioned that you recognize the opportunity for drones. What made you want to take the plunge? What made you want to do that? Um, again, it, that sounded like a stuck record. Um, mm. I was looking at, at the research. Um, so coming from both a, a military background and a policing background, you know, with police resources being overstretched, um, actually you know the private security industry in itself was growing um and it, it, it's an industry that would grow pretty much double each year um, yeah. as private security industry um and i looked at the the figures from from price waterhouse cooper for the, the projection for the next 10 years um and yeah the two married up you know the, the issues within sort of crime and organized crime and activists and all that sort of jazz um to you know where where we are um now that actually you know drones in that environment can make a difference and they have done yeah that's it absolutely awesome and a, a question that i get asked quite a lot is look jamie i've i've not touched a drone before i've never flown before i'm very nervous about doing that and but at the end of the day, it is an investment in a drone. And it's exactly the same if it's for um, a sole trader, uh, someone wanting to get into the industry, as it is for, for businesses looking to put people through the training. So what experience had you had personally with drones? Have you seen them? Have you ever flown them before coming to copters? Absolutely zero. <laughs> That's it. Honestly, it's, it's the classic, isn't it? I've never touched them. But in terms of flying, then, could you just give us a bit of insight of how easy they are to fly as well? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, so I um, I started off with the uh, Mavic 2 Pro. Um, initially, we, we were just a, a sole trader because that's where we were at that time. Um, and and actually, the more you do it, it's like learning to drive. You know, the, the first time you, you get in a car, it's scary. The first time you go down a dual carriageway, oh, it's a bit wary. The first time you go down a motorway, oh. And drones are no different to that. Um, you know, as long as you understand what the capabilities are of the drone, understand what the capabilities of, of the, the software and the devices you're using, actually you can then start to eliminate some of that fear because you bring those control factors in. That's it. It's practice, it's experience, it's, it's training in the right areas, 100%. But yeah, just for any of you that are watching this that haven't touched a drone, you may have seen one in the park, they are super, super easy to fly. It's probably the most popular question I get. Look, Jamie, I've, I've never flown a drone. I'm a complete novice. We've all been there. We've all been there. And it is practice. It is practice. So, yeah, that and Chris is the perfect example for this. It is zero to hero. And, and that's one of the reasons we've got him on. He's an absolute shining example of where you should all be aiming, what sort of processes to put in place. And again, if Chris has never picked up a drone before and he is where he is now, um, it's, it's absolutely spot on. Um, and you mentioned you've got the Mavic 2 Pro, Chris, and that's that's obviously where we started this journey. Cracking, cracking drone. Uh, it's one of our business starter package drones. Um, but what other drones do we have? What other hardware do we have? Yeah, absolutely. So initially, I said we started with it, the Mavic 2 Pro, and, and I would highly recommend it. You know, it, it is your Ford Fiesta of drones. You know, you're not going to go wrong with it. Yeah. Um, and and it, you will pick it up very, very quickly. Um, and in terms of the, the 4K resolution on the cameras, you know, from a security point of view, obviously that gave us evidential quality. But, you know, you could equally apply that to, to any setting. You could apply it to marketing. You could apply it to promotional. You know, it really is your, your, your sort of workhorse. Um, so from there, um, we then had a need for thermal imaging. Um, so that was about a year, a year later. 
Um, and it was like, okay, I've never used thermal imaging before. So we've all seen it on, on TV programs, but you know, what to do with it. So I actually went to another event uh, with copters um, over at Rugby, uh, at Dunchurch, and spent quite a, time, a lot of time with Sam. And that's what you're fine with copters, you know, it's not a one size fits all. There's different people who know different things. Um, spent a lot of time with Sam Deniff and decided that actually, you know what, we're going to stick with Mavic, but we're going to go for the dual enterprise. Um, and that gave us, as well as the thermal imaging, gave us the, the speaker, it gave us the, the floodlight, um, and it gave us the, the strobe as well. Um, and from, from business to COVID and back to business, those additions have been absolute, an absolute godsend. Um, and then we kind of progressed to this year, um, as, as things continue to, to pick up and, and to grow. Um, and we needed, you know, still staying within that surveillance and, and security environment, we needed something that was IP rated, but we could quickly deploy. Um, and we've now gone on to the uh, Parrot USA, uh, which is a, an absolutely brilliant bit of kit. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll be we'll be talking more about this with with Asif and Sam tomorrow that that Chris has mentioned there. So, yeah, phenomenal drone in terms of power and what it can do with its zoom and, and its thermal capabilities. Absolutely awesome. Um, but yeah, Chris really nicely highlighted the stages. And it's not just a case of you, you turn up and do the training with copters and we, we get you a nice shiny drone. There's a lot of other things in, in between. So, yeah, we can't do a uh, face to face demo day at the moment. But we, we can put things like this on. Um, it's going back to one of our previous points was it, there's so much information. There are so many drones and there's so many different needs for drones as well. And hopefully these situations, these events can give you those sorts of answers. Um, and that's what we're here to do. We're here for you to lean on us um, if you need that help or when you need that help. So, yeah, that's absolutely spot on. So, yeah, we've, we've got quite a fleet of drones now, Chris. Um, but they all serve a slightly different purpose. Um, so yeah, spot on, spot on then. Off yeah. the back of that then. Um, um, also, sorry, the, the one thing I would say as well is take advantage of free learning because without doubt, this is an industry that every day is a school day. You know, you will yep. learn something new every day. And, you know, the, whether it's webinars, whether it's live events, you know, take advantage of it. If it's free, go for it. Because if you go into those events with a mindset of one, and that being, I'm going to get one thing out of it, I guarantee you, you'll get more than that, just that one. That's it. It's the idea. That's it. And it's content, isn't it? It's, it is learning. And on a lot of our YouTube lives that we do, it's, it's that development. It's that personal development. And that's such a good mindset to have of, right, so now I'm, I'm going to teach myself something new. I'm going to learn something new. And this is the reason we have all this content out there because there are so many questions and similar to how copters have grown, similar to how the industry has, because we're constantly learning new stuff. We've, we've had the new regulations that have come out recently. That's been a, a bit of a, a struggle for a lot of us to understand and, and also to take advantage of how do we now operate, but it's, it's development that we all need to do and, and learn and be the, the master of in, in our area um so yeah 100 percent, 100 percent, and which leads us nicely on to training then chris so um when did you do the training and, and what training have you done then so originally i went on to the uh pfco course um as it was in in 2019 yeah um and i also got uh the level four uh, accreditation as well um which Again, it, it sounds a little bit strange, you know, I've got my PFCO, that's what I legally need, why do I need anything else? Actually, you know, it's about what you bolt on to that, you know, from, from when you qualify to, you know, as you go down the line, you know, what accreditations do you want to go for? You know, what industry are you working in that, you know what, actually, if I have safe contractor accredited as well, that bolts on to it. So, you know, that, that initial PFCO, and then getting my level four accreditation, um, you know, makes you stand out. You know, if you've got something that makes you different to somebody else, that's what you want. Um, but yeah, move forward to, to where we are now. Um, and I've now got one of our team uh, doing their training. Um, and again, you know, yes, she, she's with Copters um, and she's doing her training through the, the virtual academy, the GBC uh, A2CFC. 
Um, but again, you know, your business sense tells you to look around. You know, is Copters and, and their virtual academy really the best people? You know, there's so many companies out there. And actually, as it was two years ago, it was where it is now. I come back to the same answer. It's still Copters that comes to the top of the list in terms of knowledge, in terms of support, in terms of capability. Um, and yes, yeah, Samantha, uh, who works operational support, is, is absolutely smashing through it. Uh, and hopefully, Touchwood should be taking her, her flight test next month. Awesome. Yeah, spot on, spot on. Um, and by the way, we've not paid Chris to, to say all this, by the way. It's, this, is all, this is all gospel. And um, But yeah, in, I think we've kind of mentioned a couple already but what uh, what copters events have you turned up to what have you what have you seen and taken advantage of that we've we've put on show with you, chris yes yeah, so as we we discussed you know that initial um building a successful drone industry yeah um that then went on to doing the, the bsco uh, up in leeds at, at uh, your headquarters um i've then done taking part in different webinars um, you know, with different people from copters from different areas. Um, done a couple of attended a couple of drone demo days as well. Um, and and again, it's it's all free stuff. Um, and, but it's all knowledge, uh, and there's nothing wrong with free knowledge. Absolutely, yeah, that's it. It's it's helping you get to that stage of okay, I'm, I'm a now top end professional of what I do. I can talk to my clients and know exactly what what I can offer, what service I can provide. So yeah. That's, that's what, what it's all about. It's the whole reason we have Copters Con going on. It's just content. It's information. It's what happens behind closed doors. And we, well, me and Chris, Sam and Chris are always talking. We're always having that update of how's things going. We've now got Sam training with us. But we have that touch. So for you guys that are getting into the industry or businesses that are considering moving forward, this is that kind of exertion of all that information that we can give you from behind closed doors, as it would seem. Um, but by all means, if you do have any questions, get in touch, get in touch. I think, I think the strange the strange thing with Proctors, and, and, and this sounds kind of almost counterintuitive, is they're honest. And I know that sounds like a really strange phenomenon, but when I sort of came into the industry initially, you know, my mindset was for uh, an M200, as it was at the time, and, you know, all bells and whistles. And, you know, fair enough to Copters, you know, they could have sold me that and, you know, they would have made 30, 35 grand out of me. But actually, that's not where you need to start. Um, and, you know, came right down to, to the Mavic Pro, which, you know, is, is a mile away from a 35 grand sale. And it was exactly the same last year during the, the height of the pandemic. We desperately needed flight batteries. Um, and again, Copters were honest as to, to what the procurement options were. Um, and if you're going to be successful, you need your preferred suppliers, you're going to need your contractors, to be honest with you. And, and that's what you get. That's it. Yeah. It's, and this is this is one of the main reasons we call ourselves the experts with, with drones, because if you're coming to us with a kind of a problem that you want to use for drones for these three areas, we need to get exactly the right drone for the job. Um, so yeah, and, and that's exactly what it is. But um, yes, that's awesome feedback. Cheers for Chris. Um, okay, we'll jump into your timeline then. We've we've gone into a bit of detail already, but from start to finish, then a quick overview. Where have you come? We've obviously got three drones now. George gives a, a brief timeline of, of TLP. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, 2019, uh, we we launched, um, and really for us, we we knew the industry that we were going to get into and as i said coming from from that policing and military background it was just because we know the answer actually is that really the the, the best thing what our idea is is that the best thing so we actually spent about six or seven months market testing what we were doing so meeting with insurance companies meeting with risk management specialists meeting with end contractors um and it, it seems quite daft in a way that you're thinking, well, I've got a qualification, I want to go and earn loads of money. And yeah, you can. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And there are avenues out there where qualify one day, job the next day. But where, where does that business then go? Um, and so for us, market testing was, was key. Because during that market testing, what we found was, you know what? We, we're testing this. 
So we can't really charge our clients for it, but we can work with them on a cost basis. And you build that relationship. And that's what business is all about. It is a relationship. Um, so we did our market testing. We, we built our products. We built our end solutions. Um, we tested them in live environments. And yeah, absolutely great. Market testing was done. Business plan was done. And then COVID hit. Um, and it was like, uh, okay, <laughs> what, what, what do we do now? You know, we've done our market testing. We're, we're ready to, to really launch these products. But what do we do? And obviously, we, we all know how, how hard the, the, the pandemic has hit. But it's about diversifying. It's about keeping your skill level up. Um, and so during the pandemic, um, you know, we did a, a wide range of things that we wouldn't normally do. Uh, we got involved in farm protection. Um, we got involved in doing welfare checks using the, the thermal and the, the loudspeaker that I mentioned earlier about the M3D. And again, that was, you know, absolute godsend because we could use the drone to check on persons as opposed to sending ground resources in. Yeah. That then if that person, you know, had been safe and well, um, and but was tested positive for COVID, then you've got first responders that are then out of the game. So, you know, it's scary sometimes. You know, your plan, your business plan is is, is fluid, you know, and it has to change. Um, so, yeah, so we, we came through COVID really just by adapting and saying, right, well, where are our services needed? And again, you build that relationship and you build that, that community presence. Um, and so fast forward to, to where we are now, um, you know, we're, we're in a really strong position to, to come out of COVID. Uh, we've got our three core services. We're in the process of gaining additional accreditations. So similar to what I was saying earlier, saying, you know, your GVC or your PSO, whichever side of the, the, the year you fall on, is yeah. your beginning start. But understand your industry, understand what, what they're looking for that will make you go, well, there's Joe and he's got a PSO. Okay, he's legal. There's Dave. He's got PSEO, he's got a few accreditations, he's done market testing, he's worked with us. It's it's logic. Who are you gonna give the contract to? That's it's it's no brainer for those situations. It's and again, just circling back to some of the YouTube lives that I've been doing, it's everything that you add, whether it's more accreditations, whether it's more training, where it's a better drone, everything adds up to a better service. The better service you provide. It's, it's that honesty, again, that we've, we've spoken about. Your customer knows exactly what they're going to get and what standard of data and, and help that they're going to get as well. So it's it all adds up. It all adds up. If, even if it's that little bit of knowledge that you learned from a free webinar that you can just ping off the top of the... When you get a question from a client, it all adds up. It, it just helps. And every day is a school day in this industry because you are going to be teaching a lot of people. But, yeah, it's, that's absolutely spot on. And it is. It's we've had to be agile copters were exactly the same we obviously trained you chris face to face which is how we prefer it we then made the decision with covid we had to go online um i'm, I'm a very i like to be in person with people i like to get my questions out and most people are most people are in this industry but we've had to adapt to, to the online training and the feedback we're getting is is awesome um so yes you have to be agile in business um this can be a very intense dress rehearsal through COVID of how we have to diversify. So, yeah, it's what you've mentioned there, Chris, is absolutely spot on. And it's um, exactly what Steve Coulson has to say as well. Yeah. Um, and I think also, you know, and, and I found it with uh, with Sam, he's doing her training as well, is that the natural instinct is you make that decision. So however you've got to that point of saying, yeah, I'm going to get into the commercial drone industry and the overwhelming urge just to go out and fly and get up your hours is, is natural but actually one thing that i found leading up to doing the, the, the pfco back in 2019 was actually talking with with copters and saying right okay what what do i need to have in place what is going to make my life easier so that on that first day what what is going to make my life easier and again it comes back to honesty and they said well you don't have to have your ops manual in place. You don't have to have your logbooks in place. You don't have to have your governance and legal framework in place, but it might help. Um, and that's exactly what, what I did. 
um, you know, I got all that paperwork, the operations manual, the governance structure, all the logs ready so that when I come onto that course, it all makes sense and all the cards are in the right place. Um, and, and unfortunately, Sam has uh, accused me of being a nag uh, at times, but again, it stood her in, in, in good stead. You know, she's halfway through the course in, in four weeks. Um, and that's because I stick with what I know works, get yeah. your brand work done. That's it, it's exactly. And again, this is why we've got Chris on today because when he was the only guy on the PFCO who had completed his operations manual, everything was in check already to smash out the, the two days of learning as it was back then and then do the, the practical assessment, assessment, everyone was kind of blown away. But Chris is taking this seriously. This is a business. This is going to be the income of how he's going to start making money. So it's having that mindset. It's, it's being proactive and setting an example for yourself and keeping those processes going. So, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely spot on. Uh, and then finally, just um, uh, a really short um intro to to what tlp is then chris what what is what is it that your company do i think we can kind of all guess that anyway but so we are uh, drone security specialists um and that that is our area it's estimated to make up over the next 10 years about seven percent of the, the commercial drone industry um and we provide three core services we work we provide drone security support which is our flexible package uh, we've got our drone security threat assessment with the uh, risk assessment that we build with insurance companies and risk specialists. Um, and we've got our counter drone defense mapping uh, service as well, where we, we do a lot of reverse engineering. Um, and our, our client basis is predominantly security companies, enforcement agencies, but also end user clients as well, um, and, and understanding what, what their need is. And I think, you know, one of the questions you know, I know I certainly get asked, you know, I've, uh, my main role is with, with TLP, but I do work with, uh, do some volunteer with other organizations. And that is, well, where do you find the work? You know, where, where, where can I get some work? Um, and, and quite simply, networking. Um, networking is, is going to be your best tool. And I think we all have that kind of imposter feel. You know, we're new into a business, we're new into an era. I don't think I should be in a room full of people that know what they're doing. But actually, that's where it starts. Yeah. You know, is one person will always know ten more. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's always awkward. It's always nerve-wracking to get yourself in there. But just do it. Just do it. It's it's tough for the first couple of times, and after that, it just comes natural, doesn't it? It's just yeah. something to get into. So yeah, re really good tip there. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's fire away then. So just to quickly fly through um, some of my normal slides that we go through in terms of starting a business, uh, and me and Chris have already touched on this earlier, we're in a very, very new market. There's so many questions out there. One of the main questions I get on the phone is, is it saturated? Is it new? Um, is it worth me getting into? Um, and this is just a general trend of what you can find any market. So. You have the innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and then you have the laggards. Where we find ourselves at the moment is that early adopter stage. Um, I would argue, uh, after a few chats with, with Steve, that the chasm has definitely been extended because of COVID. Um, and I would say we're, we're getting on the way now. But early adopters, it's still very, very new. And one of the the main things I say to this when people ask me the question is, when was the last time you saw a drone fly? When was the last time you saw a drone fly commercially? If you have, fantastic, and then you know what good they can do. But generally, a lot of people haven't seen them. Um, and off the back of that, when people say, oh, Jamie, I've, I've never flown a drone, I've never seen a drone, I've never touched one. Again, it's, it's backing that argument up and it's it's very, very early stages. And this is why we're, we're saying at Copters, a lot of what you're going to be doing is commercial teaching. You're going to be showing what these amazing machines can do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's early, early doors. So it's, it's very worth getting into the industry so you can become experienced when the early majority and the late majority join the party. Um, but yeah, Chris, in terms of your experience in the industry and you're selling yourself a, a, as a service, as a product, how much teaching are you having to do and how aware of drones are, are your customers? I think there is 
I think there is the the understanding is most definitely there. Yeah. In terms of, you know, the disruption uh, that the drones can cause, and that's not disruption in a negative sense, but from mm. a business point of view, you know, they can provide so much disruption. Yeah. Um, and we worked with a company last year who, you know, they were saying, well, we've seen drones on TV. Are they as good as what they make out? And actually, when we worked with them and we we built a containment plan. We built patrol corridors for, for the drone security. They were able to reduce the need to contract uh, six additional full-time staff. So they would have normally have to go into an agency to recruit six guards. And they were able to reduce guard dog patrols by 50%. So, wow. you know, you start with that question of someone coming to you and saying, are they as good as what they say? If you are as good as what you say and you know your industry, then yes, you can prove it. Yeah, that's it. And that's it. It's saving time, saving money, making processes safer. It's these three things again. It's and that's what you'll always revert back to. And it is it's just showing people and businesses what they can do. Um and just to race through these next few slides, we've got what are business startup packages, what are they, what do they do? And in Chris, your your case, we had the Mavic 2 Pro, which we've mentioned is such a good drone, that Ford Fiesta that can do anything, amazing camera. We've done the PSCO. And we've had that ongoing support through copters and that is what our business start packages are we um we know that we extended it for you chris it was a bit of a different one um we we had very measured steps that we took but essentially that is what our business start packages are and um we've mentioned the pfco on this we've also mentioned the samantha doing the gbc essentially very very similar courses slight pivot with the new changes we now have nine modules instead of the previous eight Unfortunately, Chris had to do the 64 questions. It's now only 40. <laughs> um, still an operations manual in there, still the practical assessment. This has been changed slightly. Um, so the, the practical assessment is now two hours instead of the one. Um, so Chris came up to Leeds at our headquarters uh, to do his practical assessment, which absolutely blew Dan, our previous head of training, absolutely blew him away. Um, and then yeah, it's all these steps into getting you ready to go into the industry that you then apply to the CAA with your theory, your practical, and then your operations manual. Um, in terms of timeline, it's completely down to you of, of when you want to go into the industry and, and crack on with, with that process. Uh, but as, as we've heard from Chris, and this the, the main reason we've got him on today is do it. Be that DIN. I, I keep on talking about DIN on, on the live YouTubes as well. Just do it now. Do it now, honestly. If there's one thing I've listened to from my dad is DIN and, and have that proactive energy and just crack on with it. Don't leave it till tomorrow. It might be small. It might be that one piece of learning that you're doing today, but just crack on. And that's that's the attitude that we want you to have. Joining the Copters family, join the training. So it's all online now. Well, majority of it's all online. Um, and you can see a few modules there. So it's similar to like on your smartphone, you'll have the all the information there you have each module almost like an app on your phone click into there really really good and it's very interactive is is the feedback that we're getting so there's videos there's virtual led training sessions uh there's quizzes after every module there's mock tests there's the actual test it's all very step by step um and it, it is pretty awesome to be fair it's only getting better um we're adding more and more cpd courses and, and specialist training courses on there and again because it's online, that doesn't mean you're, it's remote learning because you can soon get in touch with us. You can soon get in touch with our training team, with myself, with any any of the guys. We've mentioned Sam already. Um, I know, Chris, you were, you spoke really highly of uh, Naomi when you were going through your process. Yeah, it's, it's that process and it's that help. That And that's what we're here for. We're, we call ourselves the experts for a reason because we're constantly testing ourselves. We're constantly training ourselves on this. So we can help you make the right decisions and get through the process as seamlessly as, as possible. Next, we are going on to the hardware. So we've mentioned a few different drones here. These are four examples of intermediate standard drones. Uh, we've got the Inspire behind me. We've got also got the Elios there as well, which is a bit more specialist. Um, but for each need, for each service, for depending on what job, as, as Chris men mentioned earlier, there's a drone for that. There is an ideal drone. There's a drone that might be versatile that can do it. But essentially, if you look at inspection, the brand new Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, 
is probably an option. Maybe the Parrot, uh, and, um, Parrot USA, which Chris has as well, and really good Zoom option there. There's an alternative, surveying. DJI are always raving about the Phantom 4 RTK. Why wouldn't they? Absolutely awesome. We have the Inspire, which is over my left shoulder, which is more for cinematography and media. Absolutely gorgeous when you see it fly. Um, and then again, we've got another alternative of the Phantom 4. We have the multi-spectral, which is ideal for agriculture. And we're seeing a lot of them being used at universities for that data capture and that analysis. Um, so yeah, in the, the main point of this slide is depending on what you're looking to get into, there's a drone for that. And through conversations with copters, we're going to find what is going to be the best thing for you. Um, and then the next step really is to kind of expand on what Chris has said, what my top tips are in terms of starting a business. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll walk through these. I know I've given Chris some homework and he's he's got a couple of top tips for us today as well. Uh, so yeah, we'll race through his top tips and then we'll do a bit more of a QA and a with you, Chris, and we'll, we'll go from there. Happy days. Happy days. So yeah, my top tips, you've probably seen this plastered absolutely everywhere. I've, I've said it a million times now, but number one has to be create an Instagram page, follow everything drone related and post at least once a day. This is a visual social media platform, which is ideal for a visual industry. All about the data, all about what you do, what drone you have, who you are. And it's an online portfolio in a world where we can't meet face to face as much anymore. This is ideal. Um, so I've just started my own Copsers Con uh, Jamie Instagram page. So I'll be doing this. I'll be trying to follow this to my own tips to let the law. Um, so yeah, by all means, have a little look at Jamie Corden at Copsers.com um, or Jamie Corden Copters rather on Instagram. Give it a little follow. I'll be posting loads of little sneaky little leaks and information about new drones and what's going on in the industry. Uh, but yeah, you need to be posting all, all the time. It's all about making noise when it comes to your marketing. Um, number two is website. Is it all up to date? Is it like Instagram? You need to have a bit of a blog on there. What services you provide, who you are, a bit of a bio and, and what you plan to offer. Chris has done his off call of four of us and that's plastered all over his website. It's on his emails. It's on every conversation that he has because he knows he's been trained to that level four standard. So it's little things like this. Again, it's adding to the quality of the service that you provide. So yeah, a few examples of these are GoDaddy, Wix, WordPress, Whitespace. Um, I've got a good experience with WordPress. Um, Chris, what what um, what uh, website did you guys end up using? So we are currently with GoDaddy, uh, yeah. and we use WordPress themes uh, with Build a Beaver uh, login, yeah. uh, which is really good. Um, but we're actually in the process at the moment of upgrading it to uh, an external uh, graphics agency. Um, but in terms of starting off in the industry and getting yourself out there, yeah, any one of those platforms is, is going to give you that head up. That's it. It's a trial and error stage at the beginning anyway. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're giving it a go. Next is the fun one, the, the classic, and it's to quote Wolf of Wall Street, pick up the phone and start dialing. Networking is ideal. Social media is fantastic, but you need to speak to people. You need to speak to people. And the, the guys that are nervous getting into the industry, it's going to happen. You need to get on the phone. You need to have Zoom meetings. You need to network. And at the moment, with us not being able to meet as much, this one is probably the most important tip. Um, Number four, the first one doesn't have to be for money. We'll build an experience, especially at the, industry, at the beginning of your, your business. And, and Chris has, has mentioned this really nicely. You're going to do a lot of testing. You're going to do a lot of trialing. Let's not stress it and go through a million miles per hour. We can. That's absolutely fine. We can test it like that. But let's not get hung up on the idea of it's money, 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 money. Let's get that service to a really high standard and do it properly. Let's go through the right processes and well initiate best practice and, and that is really what we try to home in on through our training and then finally get out and get flying it's been lovely weather at the moment and it's ideal get yourself out there get yourself to 10 hours ready for your flight assessment get yourself to 20 etc etc um i i recently used the um the the running uh the the park run analogy recently of once you get to 25 um, runs, they give you a t-shirt. Once you get to 50, 
So you need to be doing that with your flight hours. Get it on your website. You need to be showing this off. And again, this will come across in your confidence when you're flying. So, so yeah, this is what it's all about. But yeah, Chris, what top tips would you have for for anyone looking to get into the industry or even just start a business in general? Yeah, I think I think there are three that kind of spring to mind immediately. Um, the first one I would say is get a mentor. Um, yeah. You know, there's, there's lots of organizations out there that, you know, provide the service. It is genuinely worthwhile investing. Don't let the mentor be a family member or a friend because they'll be your voice of reason that says, oh, you know, nine to five, steady income, pension, that's what you want. But get yourself a mentor, someone that will challenge you um, when you, you're kind of going off the rails and, and going the wrong direction, but someone that will equally praise you because that's what you need. You need that independent sounding board to, to put you in that right direction. You're the one that will do the hard work. They're just the one that will keep you on the rails. So I'd say that would be, be my first one. Yeah. Um, my second one, I would say flying is great. You know, it, it is without doubt the best part of the job. And certainly delivering services, you know, whatever industry you're in, that's great that you're doing, the, you're getting your flying hours up but you need to remember your operations manual and you need to remember your emergency drills um, and take time out, you know, once a month as a minimum to go through emergency drill procedures, go through your flying procedures, because that's what keeps you sharp. It's sharp being flying, but sharp being flying and safe. Um, and then I'd say my third one is something my mentor introduced me into, and that's you in a chimp. We all have an inner chimp. It's a little voice in the back of your head that says, well, I don't think you should be doing that. Oh, no. And the inner chimp originally came from the, the sporting uh, environment and the sporting industry with professional athletes controlling, you know, that little doubt that says, yeah, you can't do this. Because when you master your inner chimp and you can stick them in a box, then actually you can progress a lot further forward. That's it. Yeah, it's awesome. And it is it's that little niggling fear that that's someone that's going to hold you back. And I think that mentor tip is absolutely spot on because we do get that a lot. Um, oh, I just need to speak to the other half about this conversation. I need to check it through. That safety, there is, we always strive for that safety. And I complete, I do understand it. A lot of people have been through that situation, but getting yourself a mentor, that's what it's all about. And we, we talk about, about our, our ethos, our goals are copters, and this is it to an absolute T. Push yourself, see what works, see what doesn't work. And But this is how we develop. We need to get someone to keep us back on the rails if we do start to go a little bit sideways. But having that adventure and sometimes that risk can really, really pay off. So, yeah, I think they're absolutely awesome. Um, and I did say to Chris before this, I will be stealing those because I think they're absolutely spot on them. <laughs> right, okay. So then we're going to jump into... I can see where we are running out of time, Chris, so we'll, we'll use this as a bit of a quick fire round. Um, and for anyone that is interested or wants to chat with myself or Chris after this, do get in touch uh, because we could be we could be here all day, me and Chris having a chat. Um, but in terms of social media, I've used it in my top tips. What, what social media do you have and what do you have in place? Um, so we use Twitter and LinkedIn because for business to business, that's your best tools. What I would say is understand your industry and understand when to do your social media campaigns. It'd be trial and error, but once you understand what days, what times to put your posts out, then you'll get your returns. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's, there's just little techniques to everything out there. And again, there's, there's so much trial and error in there, but yeah, you've all got a little target market out there. So it's just finding when you're going to get that reaction. Um, so yeah, spot on, spot on. Um, big question, Jamie, how do I find the work? How do I know it? there's anything going on out there? And I know we've mentioned it a bit already through this, but how do you find your work, Chris? So for us, a lot of it started off as networking. Um, and you know, that's, there's lots of agencies out there that do that from local enterprise partnerships, uh, enterprise hubs within your local town to bigger organizations like Federation of Small Business. Um, you know, there's organizations out there that do networking and at the moment, because a lot of it's virtual, it's brilliant because you get a reach across the UK. You know, you can do, you can be in Liverpool in the morning, Newcastle in the afternoon, London in the evening. It's cost you no travel, but you're out there. That's it. 
it's, it's all noise at the end of the day. Yeah, it's, it's all mixing. Um, okay, well, to jump to next steps, um, what have you done that you would recommend? I know we've had our, our top tips there. Is there anything, well, I know there's a conversation we've had recently that I'm wanting you to bring up, but yeah, what would you recommend, Chris? Um, just do it, you know, get out there and do it. Um, as I said, you, it comes back to, to being safe. Get everything in place that you need to give you that best opportunity. Because when you get to taking your qualification, whatever that is, that next day, you want to be in that best place to either go forward and just go straight into work and, and, and take any contract because you want to be a general trader or that next day be in that position to go, yeah, now you're a market best thing. Exactly, Spawn. Okay, so um, outside of copters then, what else have you done for your company? Um, I know you, you mentioned a bit of volunteering that you're doing as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm outside of, of my, my, day, my day job with, with TLP. Um, I'm one of the ambassadors for X-Forces Enterprise. Um, and that is X Force Enterprise, the, the leading organization for the, the military community that are wanting to get into business. So be that serving reservists, um, family members, spouses, X Force Enterprise then. And my role as ambassador is to support people uh, from the military community to, to get into business. Um, so yeah, we, that's one, one other aspect. Um, and then volunteering with, with other organizations that are dealing with people who want to get into the industry. Um, but again, like we said at the beginning, I haven't got a Scooby. <laughs> yeah, that's it, isn't it? But one thing to take from this is it never stops. And that is your personal development. That is you as a business, you as a person. There is just so much. Um, never, you're never going to get to the top because there's going to be something else that you're going to learn. There's always going to be that one thing. It might be learning how to get that chimp back in the box. There's all these little things and it all adds up. Um, so, yeah, again, reasons why we have events like this Copters Con. Um, okay, then finally, what are the next steps for you then, Chris? What is Tinlid's next step? What are you looking at? Yeah, so for us moving forward, um, we've been invited to exhibit at the International Security Expo this year. Um, so that's going to put us on a, a completely different platform altogether. Mm. Um, we're bringing in uh, Sorizon software from Talis. Uh, we're bringing in Pix4D mapping uh, to work with enforcement agencies. So, yeah, in, in terms of growth, um, in the next 10 years, you know, as I said, Trains and security are only 7%, but yeah, we're going to be as much as that as we can. That's it. That's the attitude. Yes, yeah, Bon Chris. Okay, awesome. Well, that's that's all your questions so far, mate. Uh, in terms of what next, if you've watched this and you think, do you know what, this is it, this is the next step I need, get in touch. We'll have a conversation just as me and Chris did a couple of years ago to take those first steps. And it's that DIN, do it now. It might be a little bit of research that you get off the back of this webinar, but if you're interested in a chat, my email is jamie.cording at copters.com. My Instagram that I mentioned is jamie.cordingcopters. Um, this is all about getting those stupid questions out of the way, getting the silly stuff that we don't know the answers to straight away. So yeah, if you are interested in one-to-one, -one, maybe looking at a business startup package, maybe just looking at a training course, maybe a drone, get in touch and we'll have a chat and we'll see what's going to be best for you. Um, but yeah, thank you very, very much for listening, everyone. That's been amazing. Chris, absolute legend as always. The reason we get Chris on is because he's an absolute shining example, a top, top fella, and everyone should be aiming to do exactly how Chris did. He is that best practice that we have through Copters. So yeah, Chris, massive hats off to you, fella. Well done, mate. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us today. Happy days. Brilliant. Happy. Cheers, guys. Stay safe. Awesome. Cheers, everyone. Thank you very much.